Hello my soccer universe. Boy, this was an evening yesterday uh, that a, I did not expect. An evening where I only could lose, literally. And then an evening where actually I think the worst of all possible outcomes, at least from my perspective, happened. I'm talking of course about Italy against Austria, uh, which was a true fight and surprisingly, and I have to apologize for my criticism on Foda a little bit, still think it's not all perfect, but I have to uh, apologize a little bit. Uh, Austria played, especially in the second half, how I would almost expect them to play. And they gave this Italy a real, real fight to the point where Italy got nervous and frustrated a whole lot. And yeah, if it wasn't for a uh, foot length, it might have ended a different way. I have said it before and I still stand by it. I want Italy to win these Euros. And for that reason, I actually, I am not unhappy. I'm really not unhappy that Italy moved on. I actually was kind of content, but I found myself, the more I saw the Austrian fight by me being squarely in the Italy corner, despite Austria being my home country, but I know that they are useless uh, winning the Euros, let's put it that way. I found myself more and more and more neutral and it was kind of whenever uh, a goal was scored, I just reported like to my wife, okay, Italy scored, Austria scored. There was no celebration in me because I felt I can only lose, but we'll talk a, a lot more about this game. Uh, second, the other one is of course that Denmark, the story continues and I think Denmark now really showed that they're a team that I really think has a semi-final at least in them. They are a really, really good team and yeah, fun team to watch. So I would say uh, we'll start actually with the Denmark game, uh, which was played in Amsterdam. And despite everyone saying, yeah, this will not be played in Copenhagen, uh, blah, 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 blah. I knew it is not that far from Denmark to the Netherlands. Uh, although I think from Wales to the Netherlands is almost equally, but you, uh, you know, you don't have to, you had, you don't have have to even fly if you wanted to to Amsterdam, so you can stay on the continent. And the stadium was fully in Danish hands. And I always have the feeling there is, and I don't know if this is uh, true, but I feel there's always a certain, despite the rivalry, there's always a certain kinship between the Dutch and the Danish. Anyway, there are there, there, there lots, lots of connections. Um, I have to say the game uh, took a little while. I mean, Denmark, uh, I think the first two to two minutes, Dan, Denmark uh, started out really aggressive, but then Wales could hold back and uh, Bale, I think in the 10th, had the first, unfortunately, only really good chance for Wales with a shot that just went over his um, uh, boot the wrong way and I, that could have well gone in. However, then uh, Denmark more and more took control of the game, especially when Christensen moved out from the um, defense into the midfield. And you could see this in the build-up to the uh, first goal also, that suddenly Christensen is in there and Denmark is overloading the midfield and having a, and uh, Wales having a really hard time. I think uh, the ball comes from them for uh, a melee cross ball to uh, Damsgaard, who dribbles a little bit, finds uh, Dolberg, who with a wonderfully threaded shot makes it 1-0 for uh, Denmark in the 27th minute. This was a really well taken shot. Uh, if you look in the replay, how, uh, I mean, it goes right where uh, Breathwaite was and a Danish defender goes right in there. Really hard, hard to see and Breathwaite was fortunately not offside because otherwise this really nicely threaded shot would not have counted because of obstruction of the goalkeeper's view. Um, and then after that goal, it really seemed like Denmark could well win this one uh, or already in the first half uh, by adding a few more. Did not really happen, but it happened right after the half where, uh, yeah, there was probably a foul uh, in the opposing, uh, you know, in, in, the, in Denmark's half. Although if I see it, I think Kier doesn't do all that much there, but you know, I could see that this is given. Then the ball comes out to Breathwaite, who just keeps it in bounds, uh, runs down the sides, uh, tries to make a cross that I think it was uh, Williams, tries to clear in place directly to Dahlberg, who can make it 2-0. Done and dusted. 
And from that moment on, it was comfortable for Denmark. Uh, I actually thought they will run out 2 0 winners. No, uh, Mele after Jensen assist makes it 3 0. And I think, okay, that sounds about right because there was nothing coming from Wales. However, it got inverse. There was a red card for uh, uh, Wilson that was not all that great. Uh, yeah, should not have happened. Um, and then, uh, then, uh, then the Denmark even score a fourth through Braithwaite, which I thought was offside, but just by hair was not. No. So, Denmark, the story continues big winners uh and as i said they really look like a team that can do a whole lot of damage in the tournament especially considering the draw which we'll look at in a little bit on to italy versus austria um i mean first the biggest fear was how will the jersey matchup go um it was my second favorite uh yeah you know blue against red that was what was given but who will wear the dark pants I actually think it would have looked better if Austria would have able to worn the black pants because it would complete this traditional alpine look on the jersey. Um, uh, those dark blue pants on Italy. I would have liked Austria playing black pants, to be honest. That, that, that would have made it bad, better. But when I looked at the lineup, I thought, yeah, Foda really wants to rely on what they did against Ukraine. And that actually, um, you know, already still. I want Italy to win the World War Zero, so I still was in the Italian corner. And uh, if anyone says uh, I'm glory hunting, I, I posted this on Twitter and, you know, I'm, I'm not getting work work up, but this hurt, 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 hurt a little bit. I've been supporting this Italian national for well over 30 years. It's not glory hunting. I've been down the Italy path through good and bad. Yeah. So I, I, I want to make sure, sure of that. And um, Austrians have always a weird relationship with their national team. Uh, if it's good, yeah. But it's almost like uh, the French were before the French became really, really, really good. It's a very fickle relationship. And uh, it's, yeah. Let's say we are not uh, as, most Austrians are not as firmly behind the Austrian national team as this is in other nations. And I remember because I have a very international workplace, um, I had an Irish guy and we explained that to him and he said, this is, I cannot imagine even that. No, we're not that pay, 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 pay patriotic and you can put it down to history. Uh, it's, it's not all that great, <laughs> to be honest. In any case, so my needle was going a little bit from uh, Squarely Italy already a little bit towards Austria and I, I really want, want, want to see. I mean, my biggest criticism it was always that Fodor does not let Austria play the way that all these players naturally play for. And this is what annoys me. And this is why I hope the Euros will expose that. However, uh, what it did expose is that Fodor is uh, adaptable and willing. Still, while well, Austria, I think in the first 10 to 10 times really uh, threatened Italy. Uh, a little bit, a, the first half then exposed this a little bit because Italy more and more clawed themselves in the game. I, th I think by minute 20, they had the game firmly under control and did all the things that I want Austria to do. Uh, they were pressing high. I mean, I, I, I remember once the, the ball was played to the goalkeeper and suddenly three or four Italians are swarming him. This is what, what I want Austria to do. Uh, and when Italy was playing the ball, even in the attacking half, the Austrians were not really, really, really uh, attacking there. They let them play. And this is what the ball do not like. If Austria hangs back, this is not good for them because A, they are not that good in passing, as was evidenced by the one really good counter-attack where then Lima overhits the ball to Anatovic. Uh, and the other thing is that uh, you're always in danger of losing it. Yes, I think... And I have to say, if you look at that lineup and where those uh, players are playing, this is a really, really good Austrian team. And that's why, why I don't like Foda. This is a really good Austrian team that can could give everyone a run for, for everyone in Europe, a run for out of other money. Literally. I think if Austria would have played this way against the Dutch, I'm not sure if the Dutch would have won that easily. I'm absolutely not sure. This was, uh, this is where I my big criticism comes. Having said all that, in the first half, it was really uh, squarely Italy, and it seemed like unavoidable that Italy will take take, take it. I mean, Immobile hit once the post. Uh, there was a good chance uh, for by Barella before the Bachmann just had, uh, saved with his leg. Um, you know, it seemed like a matter, a matter of time that Austria was barely hanging on. Um, remind me a lot of uh, Italy against Turkey in the opening game. 
However, the second half completely turned everything on, on its head and it seemed like the Wembley pitch is tilted towards the right goal. Uh, and still, Italy got more and more fr 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 frustrated. Austria absolutely then was aggressive, pulled in in, 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 in in fight and actually I think for at least the first until the 70th, Austria dominated Italy. If they had a good finisher, this could have well ended ugly for the Italians. And I have to say, I have to pay loads of respects uh, of what was happening in that half. This is the Austria that I think we could, we should see every single time. Again, I'm a little bit bitter on, on that. And I realized that at, at, at a point, I think I can only lose in this one. Uh, because I mean, yeah, Italy is probably my favorite national team. Austria is my home country, so uh, from that point, 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 point of view, the game is going in such a way that the team that I want to win the Euros uh, will at least have to go through extra time. So we'll lose a lot of uh, strength. Um, Austria is playing in such a valiant, courageous fight. I mean, already in the first, first half, but especially in the second half. A courageous fight that uh, there's absolutely no way that uh, you will get an, a different coach that is more to the liking. Uh, and I really hope that Austria will go forward to that. But, you know, in everything that I wish to happen from that game, did actually not go that way. Um, however, to be fair, I think the way Austria played, especially in the second half, and if Arnautovic's goal would have stood, I think Austria would have won that game, actually, because the Italians got so frustrated, they couldn't get anything uh, they, they couldn't get their act together anymore. Um, what actually really, I mean, that goal, it was well played. I mean, the header by Alaba, who uh, was defensively sound. I mean, he, he saved a few tackles, uh, but I think also offensively, he brought a whole lot lot to him playing him on, on the left side. I think this is where he needs to play. Honest, honest, honestly for this team. Uh, and then the header by Anatovic via the bar in. Uh, it was really great. I mean, of course, he is very, very mouth in his celebration again. However, then starting after that goal, the game got a little bit more even again because one thing happened that the Austrian coach did not do. It Italy brought on fresh blood. Barella went on, Pessina came on. Pessina actually a very crucial um, change. Verratti came off, who uh, actually had some trouble. I have, have to say Locatelli came, came, came on. And then probably a little bit too late, Chiesa came on in the 80, 80, 84th together with um, Belotti. Uh, Austria did not make a change until 90th. And I, I was thinking, or, or, or in, the 80, in the 80th, why doesn't he change? I mean, they are playing so hard that you could see that uh, some some of them were losing their strength and uh, this doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Maybe the gamble was that, at least I thought, okay, let's try to get with the first team squad to overtime and then we hit them with fresh players. No, it did not happen that way. I mean, he brought on Schöpf for Baumgartner. And then uh, when overtime started, he still did not make a change and it showed because um, Italy suddenly was fresher, tried to attack and actually um, Pessina pulled in a 95 Alaba out of position. Spinazzola with a great pass where you could see the, the empty space for Chiesa because Alaba make, makes a wrong, wrong run and then um, Lima doesn't want to do a pep pep penalty, so doesn't really uh, hinder a Chiesa too, too much, who kind of acrobatically controls the ball, puts it down and into the net. 1-0 for Italy. Yep, and then the first change came, out of of Kalajic on. Um, I cannot say, I mean, yes, Italy scored. I cannot say that uh, it was the deserved lead. I think Italy, given the, how dominant they were in the first half, maybe, and especially then in overtime. But I actually thought this will now hurt the Austrian team. And yeah, Italy could have scored then. Um, I think they had a big chance. Uh, Pessina then, after a Gerbi assist, makes it 2-0. Uh, and I thought that's the game. However, finally these changes come. Uh, Schaub 
And Gregorich Kankaman, which I found a little bit weird because uh, taking the center of the defensive midfield out did not make sense. Uh, and then he, he kind of uh, corrected for, for that a uh, little bit later by uh, with Ilsan and Trimmel come, come, come on. There's a little bit more defensive stability there because uh, we didn't have any defensive midfield people there. But starting with the second half, Austria had, had again a few chances and then uh, especially um, Sabitzer, who you need to make this goal. And then uh, in the 114th, Kalajic after a sharp corner, uh, sharp head, actually a pretty good shot or or a block. Uh, I mean, tallest man in a pitch takes the ball really, really low, puts it into net. Also pulled up a fight, but you know, uh, Chiesa could have well made it, made it, made it 3 1, and in the end, Italy go through by the skin of their teeth, one might say. Um, as I said, maybe I was not focusing too much on Austria, but I really felt that this was a, a great performance. This was probably one of the best games that Austria played against a really big opponent that now finally got tested. Um, if they play against like that against Belgium, not gonna work that well, I have to say. But you know, Italy moves on. Uh, the other thing is that uh, this performance could lift them. It reminds me a teeny bit of what Germany pulled against Algeria in 2014. Maybe, maybe, let's see. But this was a hard fight for Italy um, and Austria can exit the tournament uh, with heads held up high. I mean, uh, interviews afterwards said, yeah, we didn't deserve to lose. And I think on balance, Italy was the better team. So one has to be that fair. And um, I think Italy deserved in the end to go on. Also, I think Italy is a team that can do damage. Austria, I don't think they don't have a semi-final in them. So uh, for that reason, I gotta say I am happy that Italy moved on. Uh, so with that, we have now the three. We have Italy will play Munich. I mean, that they have has they Austria will Munich is just like a very short way from here. There will have been many Austrians. Uh, Denmark has to play in uh, Baku, and you know. Um, Italy played the winner of Belgium, Portugal, and uh, Denmark against the winner of Netherlands, the Czechs. Has a certain, uh, that has some Euro memories to me. Uh, as for the projected bracket there, it uh, didn't change much because the favorites went through. But there were changes in uh, the favorites now, because Denmark and Italy are through. It leaves them enough to be one and two in the, ra in, in the rankings of who will uh, win Euro 2016. This, of course, will change as soon as other teams are confirmed, but at the moment, Italy and Denmark, they're already around ahead, so that's why uh, they are favored to go further. Uh, today, two more, Netherlands, Czech Republic, Belgium, Portugal, exactly. We will have the first two quarter quarterfinals confirmed after today. So, I would like to know what were your thoughts on the games yesterday. Um, as I said, I think I would have expected them to go the exact opposite way the way they went. Uh, in any way, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey, just in case you enjoyed this video, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider following me on social media and actually subscribe to my channel so that you stay updated with everything that happens in my software universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!